What's up? What's up? What's what's good? Hello, what up? What up, Mac man? What up? What up? Not not much. This is another episode of Think Positive and Believe. Post show with Mac. We got my guy Mel Clemens and Tony Delp. You know, it's another, you know, another week went by. A lot of different topics to discuss, <clears throat> especially you know Jordan's documentary ending ending soon. You know the coronavirus still going around. Still and stuff opening up the NBA. That's gonna be um, a great show we're gonna have right now. Um, no, I just want to check on my guys. See how y'all been doing these past this past week? Man, I'm cool, man. Cool. Just uh, trying to get through this last week of school. Trying to work on this extra two pounds I gained over the holidays and the, the break. Try to beat this because <laughs> I got a little dis- disrespected last week, man. Somebody talked about my basketball skills. So I'm letting everybody know I'm gonna lose about. About 14, 15, and I'm crossing somebody okay. else. That's all I'm saying. 14, 15, that's a, that's a, that's all that's I a need. three-month I process lose. right there. Hey, if I lose 25, I'm dunking. 14, 15, I'm crossing somebody <laughs> else. I ain't calling nobody's name. I did this before. My brother did me the same way. He started talking junk, said what I could do, what I couldn't do. I said I'm going to lose 20, and I ended up losing 40, and I started dunking again. All I'm going to do is cross somebody up. That's all I got. That's all I got to say. You're, and you was probably 15 years younger when this happened, too, huh? Nah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it, that was a good time, though. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Hey, hey, hey just, just because you got your... I'm good, man. Just because Mel got his AI, AI tennis shoes on, I mean, he can, he can use his crossover. So so sometimes you got to know where to relax. You know? Uh, no, no, man. Hey, I'm excited about at some point in time, you know, getting back in the gym with my uh, with my youth basketball teams, my third grade, my fifth grade, my seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth grade. So the kids are anxious about, you know, uh, uh, when the gym is going to open up and to get to uh, get their conditioning back back where it once was. So I'm really excited about the kids. You know, once school is done for most of these guys. Uh, they'll be able to get in the gym and, you know, we'll start start back training uh, like we did right before uh, this pandemic hit. So I'm excited about that opportunity for, for the kids. Yeah. No, that's, speaking um, of that. Kind of big... Go ahead. Right. Now I'm saying I that's, speaking that's of that, that, TD. Yeah, lead, leading to the first question. Like, it, like kids and stuff is getting out playing, stays up. Um, like, what are you, what's your thoughts on the NBA is it too soon? Is it, like, what, what do you think their timetable is? That their timetable is at? You no, know, with me, um, you now I played in Israel. Finished it this year in Israel. You no, know, they started the league back, and for me, best for my family. I, I thought it was best that I did. I, I feel like it's it's too soon, and I you no, know, I can't leave my family here alone by themselves. Like, what's y'all thoughts on that? I think we're gonna have. Uh... I think, like I said, somebody has to be the pioneer to get this back going again. And everyone is going to try to get it right, not trying to make any mistakes. But at some point in time, we're going to have to get back out there and, and live our lives. But under different circumstances, you know, you're going to see more people with masks. Uh, we're going to be practicing more social distancing and using more hand sanitizers, cleaning off the balls. So I have a plan in place myself that. I've talked to a few different uh, organizations as well as some uh, directors on what they're going to do when their kids come back. And most of it is to just make sure that, you know, we're washing our hands thoroughly, uh, using the sanitizer, like I said, and, you know, just making sure we take care of our bodies and we're not spreading it, but also having a thermometer is something else that I'm going to add to my program and making sure that those kids are healthy when they come through the door. So really, it's going to it's going to rely on the parents. I think parents at this stage right now. And as I told my kids, you know, you're not it's not you're not forced to come back. It's not mandatory when you feel comfortable enough and your parents feel comfortable enough. You're more than welcome to come to the gym or give me a call and kind of see what we have, what our guidelines are uh, as we start, you know, at some point in time, it's AAU season. Now, Man, I know you. Mel, you, run, you run a, a big program here. In the state of Georgia, like how are you handling the situation? Um, you know, with your kids thirsty to get in the gym and play, like how do you feel about that? Like I tell everybody, it's a double edged sword, man. Uh, I'm a basketball guy, so I want I want the kids to be back in the gym. 
but I also want it to be safe. And you know, I'm, I got to put on my 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 personal hat and not my business hat. It's just it's it's just it's just tough for me, man, right right now. Man, my, one of my sons went to the beach this weekend. He said everybody was at the beach chilling. Resorts packed in Hilton Head. Everybody's out, so you know everybody's getting comfortable. But right now, they said China about to shut down again. They said 109 people are being shut down to stay at home in the country of China. But we worried about playing a basketball game or a football game. The economy has to start moving. But I'm telling you, what's going to be so crazy is when we look back 30 years from now, they're going to say people would die, and we talking about what sporting events are we getting back. That's, that's <laughs> what's going to be crazy. Think about think about when we look at this. Is what people don't understand. This, this is history that we're going through. The thing when we read about the depression, the thing when we read about the Holocaust, about slavery. This is one of those times when the banks are shut down, people running out of food, people not having money, and the whole economy changes. So we talk about some sport events, even though it's going to generate economy, and we need that. We need that energy. I mean, we need something to watch, but at what cost? Nah, I definitely agree. Uh, on Saturday, I was watching. Uh, I don't know if y'all. No, the Cornhole Championship on ESPN. And um, it was actually live. Those, um, they had masks on, like everyone was scanning and, and all of that. But, you know, it just, it just depends on what you want. Like, I, I don't think my life, I don't think basketball is like risk, like my life right now, especially with my family and other situations going on. So I'm okay with shutting down. Like the biggest thing is, um, you know, the NBA has a big decision to make. I know they don't finish the season this year. They, they, um, Think they lose like nine hundred million or a billion dollars? Like, you think they should start playing because of the money, or they should just relax and, and just go on to next year? And also, you have the CBA is coming up too. This is very big for the players and the you know the owners. So it's a lot of things moving. That I can see why the NBA want to play, but I just don't. If one person can get it and shut the whole thing down, I just don't think it's worth it. Well, go ahead, Kenny. Listen to you and Mel, you know, I, I think the genders think differently. I think men are risk takers and we all are very, you know, when it comes down to making a decision, men are more, more susceptible to going out and taking the risk, you know, so all these leagues are predominantly men and women are the caretakers. So women are the ones that, you know, caring about, okay, what if you get, what if you get sick, if you get this disease, you know, somebody got to take care of you. And men are not thinking like that. You know, we're thinking right now, we're thinking financially. And that's how we've always thought. You know, it's about professing, providing, and protecting. And one of those is, how do I provide if I'm not working? So it's difficult for a man to be in a situation where his family rely on him to take care of the household. So what we know is we put our life on the line for our family and for our kids. And that's just how men are. We, we will take that risk, you know, uh, every day if it's, if it's presented, you know, to take care of my my kids, you know, my wife, my, my, you know, significant other, but you have to be cautious right now because this is something that's new to all of us. Like you said, there was a great depression. There was slavery at one point in time. There's a lot of different things that happened in this country, but in our lifetime, you know, this is something that I've never seen, especially when it, it is constantly, you know, spreading around, you know, not only in, it's not in one, it don't, it doesn't discriminate. So that's the one thing that's, we think about the pandemic is, it's like cancer. Cancer don't just pick one race or one culture and say, hey, you know what? We're going to pick you and, and we're only going to just, you know, have our sickness on your culture. It's like this is this is a worldwide pandemic that has affected millions, millions of people. And it's not about the death. It's about financially. A lot of people have been affected. That That's a balancing act, uh, Shell. I want to get your opinion on it, too, because uh, even though we got to look at the cost of living, cost of lives, and the damage that can be done. And I had to I had to agree with our president on some of this part when, when he said, like, how much is enough? I mean, how many businesses can we let fail? I'm going to be honest. How many businesses can we let fail? And how many people will we let out of work to save? And what he's not saying, it's, it's 100,000 people. It was 50,000, now it's 100,000. And will we give up a trillion dollars? It's like a war. You get, And that's what they're doing behind closed doors that they ain't talking about. They balance it. Okay, we're gonna lose this amount of people, but we're gonna save these many businesses. And if we don't open up, this is how many people are gonna die anyway, through suicide, through mental health, through depression, through not having jobs. So they're trying to balance that. So Shell and other people, like if we had family members with sickle cell, with immune deficiencies, like Larry Nance said he had an issue. He said he hopes they understand he might not want to come back. 
if you had a brother or a son or a child with immune deficiency or sickle cell or some type of disease, would you would you let them play if, if it is true that the corona is harder on those people than everybody else? Well, you know what? No, I wouldn't let I would play be at all. Because you wouldn't let him play shit. To, to your point, um, I do have two kids that have sickle cell disease. And if it were if it were up to them to make the decision on whether to go back, I don't think they would. And as a parent, I wouldn't allow them to go back because they are at risk. You know, especially my oldest daughter, who has had some issues with her lungs. And, you know, as I was speaking with her, it's my oldest 21 year old daughter, you know, and just going back to campus and uh, having a mask on, but just not being around people who you're not familiar with. You know, uh, online classes for her is great. I was like, like I, and I've said this before to Mel, is that you only get one life. You don't, I, I don't know about coming back doing this again or seeing if, you know, what happens later, later down the road. This is one chance. And you don't want to risk it on, you know, just trying to go back out, go to class or to make more money. Is that you have to do what's best for you, you and your body. And I would definitely tell my kids not to, uh, to attend classes. Yeah, like definitely what Tony said. Like, don't care how much money you got, you can't buy another body. It's, it's like you gotta cherish this and understand what you can. You know, put yourself at risk. Um, that's one of the big reasons why I'm back to Israel. Is like, <clears throat> um, no, I have a, I have asthma. I have a, a lot of other things. So, uh, I think I have sickle cell. We, we figured that out. I used to cramp out, cramp a lot. But like, I just don't want to be be around that right now. Like, I'd rather just be safe, stay at home with the family. Um, no, I like money. Don't get me wrong, but I ain't, I ain't about to die with no money. I, I, I got ways to make it. No, I'm very creative. And see, and I like to get some audience participation. I, I see a lot of people watching. I like to get some of the comments because I think our perspective is going to be a little skewed because I, I guarantee you, if I was living way less than I'm living now and my decision was to play ball, open up the gym, or not feed my family, I'm going to feed my family. So it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with that because I talk to a lot of my teammates that's going back. The only league in the world that's playing right now. So I talk to a lot of my teammates. You know, my situation is different than there. Like I understand why they're going back. It's, they they have to put they have to put food on the table. You know, they have goals and stuff they want to reach. So I understand that. But like I'm, we in a different spot, so I don't can speak how I'm feeling right now. And and that's a, a good thing that we have to talk. Go ahead, Didi. No, no, no. I, I, to to Shell point, like I said, I mean, you got to know where you at financially, and and it's. I think for each of us, you know, with you know, Shell just getting to his thirties, and you know, we're in our forties, is that every decade presents a different challenge. You know, when you're in your twenties, you know, you're gonna have fun, you're excited, and when you get to your thirties, you you you're more than likely you know working on a family, and then as you go past that, when you start losing things in your forties, fifties, sixties, especially money financially. You know, those could be devastating hits because it takes time to build an empire. And if you start seeing that empire crumble, you start losing money in that empire. That's where some of the older guys are saying, like, you know, I have to get back out there. And as I said earlier, provide for my family. How do I keep providing for my family when I am the breadwinner? Yeah, yeah. No problem. It's because the good thing about when you make safe decisions and smart decisions when you're younger and a good job is it gives you options. And right now, the people who are doing OK, we have options. But when they talking about the percentage of people who die and getting sick, they don't have the same options. They live in densely populated areas. They have less less access to health care and they don't have the option. So that's a, one of the good things. When people ask me about financial resources and business classes, some of the things my dad taught me is like money. And resources give you options. And right now, we have options. Here's my question to Mel, uh, and you can answer this too, Shell, is how soon do you start teaching your kids about finances? Whew. You want to go first, Shell? Uh, yeah. No, I, I, got, I got the youngest kids here. Uh, I got my son that's one and my daughter is four. I'm teaching her right now. She think everything is just free. She can do this and now, like anytime, so especially being at home on quarantine, anytime we do some uh, schoolwork every day, I give her like 50 cent or a dollar. And then at the end of the week, we might go get some ice cream or something, and she has to pay for her own money. It's like teach her to like to work. So some days she might ask me, can we do some work so she can get some money so she can get some ice cream later on. So I, I try to hop on that right away. 
uh, I started teaching my sons when they were like five or six. I read the book uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and it changed my life. I don't read a lot of books, but that was one of the books I happened to read, and I immediately started teaching my son. How you gonna write a book and don't read a lot of books? That don't make sense. <laughs> TD got a book. I ain't never seen him read a book ever. We've been together, so. Hey man, he I, I read, man. Uh, he read. Okay, my bad. No disrespect. He read. He read. I started I read, reading I read. when I got a little, a little bit older, but I taught my kids. The first thing I taught them, and I think this is, if anybody learns anything about business. I would tell them to teach their kids this, these two things right here, assets and liabilities. If you know the difference between that, that's the difference between poor people and rich people. Rich people buy more assets, poor people buy more liabilities. I taught my kids that when they were real young to buy things that appreciate value, simple economic principles that they, they teach in business school at a high level. I tried to break it down to my sons when they were like eight, nine, and six, assets and liabilities. So six. Okay. What about you, TD? What about you? What'd you do? I'm kind of like I'm kind of like you guys, man. Um, you know, I got a chance to read, you know, a lot of books growing up, and as I've been older, I've been reading more, you know. But Rich Dad Poor Dad was something that really, really stuck to me when I was talking to my girl just about financing and being independent, and you know, who has the money has the power, and I, I solely believe that when it comes down to a lot of decisions that are being made, even now in this pandemic, is the people who have money are the ones that are making the ultimate decision. It's not about the poor, the, the middle class. There's a lot of middle class and poor people, but you know when you look at that upper echelon, that one percenters is those are the people that are making the decision in this country. And you know I know we're gonna get into some politics a little bit later in our show, but for right now, I just think you know being independent, putting yourself in a position where you don't have to depend on someone, and it's like creating multiple streams of income. Because what people are finding out now in this pandemic is that if you have a job and your job, you know, decide to furlough or cut your, let's say, cut cut your pay down to 80%, let's say 20% off your 100% or down to 40%, you don't have any other op options. So what I was taught by my financial guy is how to create multiple streams of income. So if one, in, one uh, stream of income stops, you have two or three more to pull on. If you just have that one job, then and that one job decide, you know, that company file bankruptcy or they decide, hey, you know what? You know, we don't have enough to pay everyone. What are you going to do? What is your next step? So creating multiple streams of income is something I've always shared with my kids. No, yeah, I definitely I gotta, agree. I, I got I got something for you, though. If, if, if you're in a struggling situation, we're going to kind of switch the topic. If you're in a struggling situation. We all done seen Mike Tyson training right now. How much how much would it cost you to get in the ring with that guy right now? Right now? <laughs> how long? How long? Right. How long? You got you got you gotta get you gotta get nine minutes, three three rounds. <laughs> <laughs> nine minutes. Would you I think see, I know nope. Tony a little more money about it. He a little more money. I think nope. he'll do it for a million. Hey man, I'm hey listen. I'm not trying to let that man break my reels, man. Hey, listen, until you have some reels broken or you've been hitting your head, you have a concussion, that's not a good feeling. And, and I know the way I saw him punching on that video, man, listen, them shots still going to hurt somebody. I don't know who he going to hit. Uh, if you hit somebody, something going to break. Something uh, definitely, definitely going to hurt. How, 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 how much would it take you for getting there, man? I want to know. Like, what, what, how much would it take I, you I, I how long you think you can, you can last? Oh, I definitely want to do no three rounds. If I could get 30 seconds, I still got about five to 10 seconds worth of quickness. If I can scoop real quick and scoop. But one, <laughs> that one punch, I'm going to cry like a baby. I ain't going to lie. Hey, 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 still, hey, still. I, I honestly think he would knock Mel out on sight, man. As soon as Mel walks in the ring. <laughs> as soon as... <laughs> <laughs> Cause we we already we already know Mel. Hey, don't come in with that Jerry curl either, man. Cause we're gonna see some curl juice flying. Ask, ask Miss Green about that. <laughs> Look. Oh man, hey, TD, I ain't lying. I ain't gonna do it. But see, Tony, keep talking. I'm, I'm gonna reach out to Tyson. We're gonna put a we're gonna do it for charity. We're gonna raise money for the TD Foundation, Shelby Mac, and Superhero, and we're gonna substitute hey, Tony as a boxer. I'm getting in with a. When I, if I can come with a helmet on and some shoulder pads, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting the ring with him with all that on. Other than that, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Mm -mm. I'm, I am good. 
But no, like to be honest with you, like I said, you can tell he he's been working out, staying in shape. But it is I think where the fighters at today and how big they are, like we're talking about six five, six six monsters in the ring, two fifty, two seventy. So even though Mike Tyson dominated during his era, it was mostly guys about six one, six two, about two ten, two twenty. We're looking at men that are pushing three hundred pounds, two seventy, two eighty. Because if you look at you know, some of the bigger fighters right now, Tyson Fury is, you know, he, he's a basketball player, you know, fighting, and he has great footwork. So to see Mike Tyson ring, I don't want to see him in the ring with somebody like Tyson Fury. No. Uh, so you, nah, no change in the world. I'm looking, at the, I'm looking at the audience. There's one of them said five to ten seconds is too long. And one guy said uh, he think you can take him, Tony. So they, they the crowd is right now voting. <laughs> It's 10 to 20, 10 to 18, 25 people. They were not sucking me into that. Absolutely not. They said they think they can take them. I know, hey, I know my place. Yeah. Oh, speaking of boxing, you know what? Hey, 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 hold on, Mel. We do have someone who has been boxing and sparring in the ring. It is not either one of us. We're going to have to get some video from a good friend to show Shell in the ring. So maybe, so maybe we do have someone that can take on Mike Tyson here, other than us forty-year-old yeah. guys. I forgot we. Yeah, it yeah. was a footage leaked today, wasn't it? On the boxes. Yes, it was. Let me see if I can find this footage. Nah, 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 nah. That was some. That was some horrible footage that was leaked today. I was. I was. Nah, leaked, that was so hard. I, I was helping. I was actually helping a real fighter out. I was just throwing something. Uh, wasn't, it wasn't me. Either. But I'm solid. Don't don't get it twisted. Hey, you you solid until you can hit. You solid until you get hit in your face with a punch. Oh yeah, that's, that's how we do it. We 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 boxers, no head shots, no head shots, just all body shots. So I, I don't know. Hey, hey, hey Tony, right why, well, Tony, why he talking jump? I flew to Boston to the Boston game, and Kyrie jumped on him in the game. Me and Chase jumped out the stand. So I didn't see no boxing skills. Tyree Ty- 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 caught him like this. In the garden. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about this box of steel, nah. man. I forgot about that. Uh, hey, we, we definitely know. But, uh, nah. but I, I don't uh, think I don't think no. he's ready. I don't think Tyson's ready though. I think that uh I think you know if he did like a three like a nine minute match where his lungs can keep going, I think he can compete with most boxers. But yeah, I think he, like even when I see Tony playing, Tony's only fifty three, even when he plays He's still able to move. <laughs> 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 He's still able to cut and move. So Tyson, <laughs> Tyson, is, they'll, you know, if Tony can do it at his age, Tyson go about three hey, rounds. What'd you say? Say it. I couldn't hear you, man. My, my speaker went out. What'd you say again? I said, I said, if Tony can still move and play basketball, like when I see him playing the kids at, at 53, him and, him and, <laughs> him and Tyson. Him and, him and Tyson can still do three rounds. Tony can go three games. So I think Tyson yeah, you can give like a. Hey, you look like you look like a Vander Holyfield. And he said he's back too. So it's like Mike Tyson back <laughs> at Vander Holyfield. <laughs> they they say he really tried to do a charity event, but they said that's what George Foreman did. They said Foreman did the same thing. Started out with just doing a charity event, and then he eased his way back in, but. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him a secret. He gotta act like he don't know what he's doing. He can't have a video up when he he's knocking the the trainer out and stuff. You can't hide that. Yeah, that, like, that, ain't that, gonna that, hop in there. Ain't no, ain't no celebrity, uh, that, ain't no celebrity hopping in that ring with him like that. And that's what they said. They said they know Mike Tyson ain't gonna go in there and uh play soft. You know he only fight one way. So even if he fighting a, a charity event, <laughs> like they said, somebody get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> 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 He won't. Hey, won't be nobody on this call. Is it no, time absolutely. absolutely not. Uh, I yeah, am yeah. good. Nah, uh, all right. We're gonna um, take a little break real quick. Everybody, get you some drinks. Hydrate. Use what you gotta do. We're gonna be right back at this commercial. Got, I got one of my close friends um, coming in. Um, he's very crazy. Got some crazy opinions on a lot of things. Looking forward to this. We'll be right back. All right. Amp Consulting is a company that helps people buy and sell insurance agencies. 
When people want to change careers and get into a new industry, they call me to find an insurance agency to buy. When people want to retire and get out of the insurance agency, they call me to help them liquidate their assets or sell. Some people call me a broker. I'm more of an intermediary. I'm kind of like between a buyer and a seller. I make it fair for both parties. The primary reason somebody would leverage Sam Consulting is because we create millionaires. We help people retire from the business and retire wealthy, or we help people get into the business and grow to be wealthy. The reason I use Sam Consulting is the reputation, professionalism, the expertise, and the amazing job of doing the due diligence is what convinced me to work with Sam Consulting. Owning an insurance agency is one of the biggest kept secrets. It's generational cash flow coming in every month. This is what I do. I create millionaires by walking through the process step by step on how to own their own business. The best way to reach me is go to samconsulting.com or you can simply call the office 678-223-7397. Like cash envelope budgeting? Then you're going to love Cube. Cube is a one-of-a-kind app card combo that unites banking and budgeting. Here's how it works. First, you split your paycheck into cubes. Cubes are like piggy banks with purpose. Basically, you're giving every dollar a job. When you're at the store or online and ready to make a purchase, simply choose which cube the money's coming from and ensure you have enough. There are no overdrafts. You've got $1,000 allocated for groceries. Your cart rings up for $250. The cube card has a default zero balance. This prevents theft and any unplanned purchases. You select your grocery cube, which then automatically transfers your available funds to your cube card. Now run the card. $250 is removed from that cube. The remaining $750 is returned back to the cube as available funds. Bingo! You're done! Easy! Oh, and if you've shared the cube, your people will get a notification, so everyone's on the same page. Every purchase you make with cube is tracked, so you can see your purchase history for each cube category. Easy peasy. Download today and start spending with purpose. Cube. Are you suffering from fear and anxiety? The Allen Counseling Clinic is here to help. Our goal is to help you grow from your struggles, heal from your pain, overcome your fears, and get the relief from your anxiety. Call now. Area code 424-295-6227. Telehealth is now available. My peoples, what up? What up? What up? Everybody, this is my friend. This Everything is, is popping. We good. His name is DeAndre Adams. I'm. A, I'm. A, we gonna get right away. DA he's the biggest. He's the biggest UK hater that you will ever meet in your life, TD. He, he's a. He's a. Oh, he's I know. I don't even know why he's on the way. He shouldn't be on here. <laughs> any, any, it's any, like any, setup, TD. Hey, hey, man, I, I respect Tony Delk and his game and everything that he did at the University of Kentucky, man. I just, it, it's not the players, it's the fans. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's you the, let this man the, talk about your fans like that? Hey, man, our, our fans are what they are. He, he, know, he know we have the most loyal fans in the country. <laughs> they travel 
Hey, he he'll tell you, man. If, if Kentucky play on the moon, hey man, you will have some people trying to get on get on that shuttle and go to the moon. That's just how that's just how the fans are. But to your point, DA, you know the fans were really the reason why I chose to go to Kentucky because of how loyal they were, how much they loved Big Blue Nation. Right. Yeah. Either you love them or you hate them. <laughs> Pete, turn your phone to the side, Pete. Turn your phone to the side. Pete, let him, let him know how bad UK basketball is. Give it to him. No, man. I mean, it's just UK. They win a championship probably every twelve years or something like that, and they gas them up like it's the greatest basketball program in the world. It's it's just beyond me. It's beyond me. Uh, hold on, hold on, TD. You ain't gonna come on on our show and talk about more. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions, DA. I'm looking in the wall. Where, uh, what, what degree? Where, what school did you graduate? Let, let me see on the back of the wall. Where did you graduate from? What? See, I don't see, see, see nothing. Uh-huh. I, I, I went to UK. Now I went. I went to UK, but okay. I, I walked around with my Duke shorts on. Yeah, you went. To, <laughs> hey, 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 DA. <laughs> I can't believe you went to UK. <laughs> yeah, I you walked around your Duke. Hey, hey, you know what? But 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 Duke behind us in wins and in championship and players in the pros, so they are beneath us. I, but I will hey, say I this: understand I that. do like Coach K. I do like Coach K. Oh, yeah. He Coach is K, one of Coach the K's absolute legend. Coaches. Cal- absolute Calipari is a legend absolutely. as well. I'm not kidding. Yeah, Calipari, I mean, it's, it's Calipari is definitely class. a legend. Nah, the thing well, I, uh, I, I, nah, I got you on here. Yeah, yeah. Now I guess I guess you don't hear it, Pete. We have a debate all time. Uh, uh, top ten players all time, top five. You know, we don't we're gonna have a lot of time with you. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do your top five player all time. And these two, two guys, they, they both like 50, 50 something. They think Jordan is the best player ever. Especially watching the last dance. Quick hold on, quick quick question. Did, did y'all watch the episode last night? Uh T D M yeah, I, I watched. Right, watch we it. already know we did. Pete, what? Uh, Pete, what did we talk about? If five people bring you a pizza, what you supposed to do? Hey, you supposed to throw that pizza away, man. Jordan wasn't a bright guy. <laughs> 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 hey, five people knock on your door to deliver you a pizza. That pizza ain't it, right there. It's not what you want. It might be a bomb. You're right about that, man. <laughs> but but hold yeah. on, hey, D A and Shell. Think about this though. Is when his trainer, when Tim Grover called, I'm telling you, and Shell, you know this, you 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 played for Utah. Everything shuts down at a certain amount of time there. So I'm sure when they called, when they called, you know, saying, hey, they, we're shut down. Can you do something for Michael Jordan? So those guys probably got together was like, man, we were making a piece for Michael Jordan. We want to go and see him and meet him. So what about, you know, those guys were thinking like, man, we about to make this dude sick. I don't know if they thought that, but. I would have been right with them. I've been right along with them if Michael Jordan was at the hotel. And we all know we would have been right. We'd have been one of them five guys. I probably yep. would have been uh, one of them uh, five. Uh, you right. You right, Tony. You right. You right. I would have been right there with him. Trying to get this and all the You already know. Yes, sir. It just looked. It, it he looked they would have had yes, seven of them. They had to drive. They had to drive <laughs> two cars and deliver one pizza. It don't look shaky. Do it. It's Michael Jordan, man. Michael Jordan is an iconic figure. In 19, 1998, you telling me that if you had an opportunity to meet Michael Jordan, that you would have been like, man, you know what? I, I don't want to go. And it's not even about hating on him. The dude is an iconic figure. Of yeah. course, it man, might be your only eight. chance to meet him in person. Man, I was eight. I was like, like Mel C. Iverson. That's how I was, Mel. Mel the same way. You'd have went to. Um, no, nah, be honest, man. I wouldn't have went. I ain't really into Michael Jordan like that, man. <clears throat> he, 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 number one, he couldn't shoot that good. He's one of the worst shooters <laughs> to shoot any three-point line ever. When he first came in the league, all he did was dunk. I mean, he just – I wouldn't have been that high. Hey, it's it's no. my type of show. That's my type of show. Hey, Silky Johnson. Hey, Silky Johnson, you need to relax, man. <laughs> Stop hey, this, man. I'm just telling you, in, in this day and age, they tell me he would average 45. He wouldn't even average 15 because he can't shoot a three. He wouldn't. He can't shoot no threes. He'd have been shooting mid-range jumper, and he'd be with that self block. Hey, 
as Rick James said, cocaine is a hell of a drug, man. You might want to get oh, off man. that. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> get, and, and, and the game in 2020 is a skill game. It ain't whoever the strongest who can jump the highest. It's skill. I mean, he, you know, he, he was good. Now I ain't saying he wasn't good, but averaging that 45, and you can't shoot a three pointer, shoot 28. Hey, I shot 36. My boy shot 36. Hey man, honest. don't you ever, don't you ever, don't you ever in our conversation mention AI and Michael Jordan in the same conversation? Okay, <laughs> let's start there. There's only two people you can you can you can say Jordan alongside. That's yes. LeBron and Kobe. And Kobe, that's it. That, that it stops that's, there. That's where that, the conversation ends. Mel Clemens. Word, word on the street. Word on the street. I heard a fadeaway was a desperation shot. A fadeaway Ooh. is a desperation <laughs> shot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's it, it, when you can't when you can't beat your defender, you gonna fade away, man. Come on, now. come on, Tony. <laughs> but hey, see, Mr. Del, tell her. Hey, 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 Da, but Da, think about this though. When you get old, I mean, older, like Mel, <laughs> Mel, Mel never could fade because he couldn't jump, so he never had a fade away. Oh, so somebody told you wrong. Like that, <laughs> somebody told you wrong. It wasn't that good, but jump. When you can't jump, man, you can't have no fadeaway, you have no step back, you have nothing in your game, and that's male. So I'm gonna be in this right now with my top five. I'm trying to be in this baby. My top five, I'm gonna start at number five. Number five, Shaq. Should be no question. Number four, Kevin Durant. Number three, Kobe. Number Hey man, you, you gonna I'm say you this? Are you, are, you, are you doing a presidential election right now, man? Uh, I, I'm doing it. I'm going. I'm going to reverse. Shaq five, KD number four, Kobe number three, MJ number two, Allen Iverson number one. Number one. That's it. Hey, uh, now, this, is your personal. This, is, this is just your personal list. That's all I got is my personal. I'm not. I'm not in the committee. I'm giving you my personal. Da, give me yours. Starting at number five. He thank you. Pete, go ahead. Your top yeah. five. Oh, yeah. LeBron James is one. Oh, okay. L Lbj, all right. Who with you? Michael Jordan, two. All right. Shel he can see this number two. Shelby, uh, Shelvin turned me into a Kobe fan because I definitely wasn't a Kobe fan, but after watching his body of work, I'm going to rock with Kobe at three. Yeah, after he gave Shelvin 61, I, I agree. Six, 60, 60. 60. <laughs> tell, right. tell he him, made a free throw. Tell him, Shell, you ain't getting none of that 60, though, did you, bro? He did. Yeah, yeah, hey, 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 as a matter of fact, Shell. Hey, Shell, you need to pay up that money too, man. You better, you better, <laughs> about, you better last week that you that, that you didn't get in that that sixty. Hey, Da, he got some of that sixty, man. It was a transition <laughs> play. <laughs> hey, Da, it was a transition play. Shelby picked his ass up. He went right by Shelvin ass. So he tried to say he didn't get any of it. He got some of it. Uh huh. He, he got yeah, some of it. Hey, man. What you got, Da? Shelvin kept letting you want Shelvin left. My bad. TD, I don't think you want to do this, man. Don't make me go to YouTube and and, and, and me and Mel gonna be sitting leaning back watching Ives and get that fifty on. Oh, hey man, hey, hey, the fit, the fifty ain't sixty though. <laughs> it ain't sure. It is not sixty. Hey. Not sixty. Hey, Shelby, you. It's only been so I, many. I was a young pup. Games. I was a young pup. It's only uh, been so many sixty point games. It's only been so many sixty-point games in the history of the league, Shell, and you have received it. That's that's and awesome, win this one. Yeah. Matter of fact, Shell was on the floor for one of them. <laughs> I, was on, I was on the floor for another one too. I told y'all that they didn't Hey, li literally on the floor. <laughs> literally. <laughs> All right, Da, we on number four. Who you got? Shaquille O'Neal, and then okay. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. All right. All oh right. man, okay. okay. Hey, hey, can, can I go next, man? Well, hey, can you move it? I'm hey, writing this down, man. Want her, no, we don't want her none, no Wildcats, man. Hey, yeah. in the Wildcats, hey, stop it, man. Stop it, man. Hey, hey, stop that. I'm starting out with number five. Number five is Larry Legend. Who? 
Larry, Larry Hughes to play with Allison. He one of my favorites too. <laughs> Larry Hughes. A number four is the magic man. Okay. No disrespect. All right, magic number four. Number All three, right. Kobe Bean Bryant. Kobe Bryant, okay. Kobe is consistent number, number three. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, number two, I'm going with MJ. Woo! MJ consists number three. All right, number one. Hey, hey, My number hey. one man is is that dude that threw that sky hook, man. The most dominant player on Ooh. every level. When you look at stats from high mm -hmm. school, college to NBA, nobody stats are like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay, all right, dude. All right. I didn't see anything like that. Uh, but when matter of fact, when you matter playing, fact he got, when hey, he he got six of them MVPs too. While 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 we talking, he got six of them things. Yeah, yeah. So I how was it? all the stats? Three like national college players. Play, hey, we hey, did. We looked at it. Shell, three national college player of the year. He went eighty-eight and two as a collegiate <laughs> player. Do the math, brother. Hey, when y'all yeah. when y'all were in practice, how was it? Hey, you, you was like, hey, you was our ball boy. Hey. Oh, <laughs> man, man, you you didn't play, you didn't play with Jabbar, did you, man? Yeah. Hey, man, hey, 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 Mel, you ain't, hey, you Mel, ain't that old. Mel is a Mel Groupie. You ain't that old. Uh, Mel is a Mel. Hey, he, he's the Mel Groupie, man. Don't let that Mel Groupie stop you, man. Hey, uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna fight with you, man. It's all right, man. Everybody get old. All right, Shia, come on with your list. We're going with LeBron. Uh, uh, your your LeBron. microphone ain't working a lot. You about to tell. We can't hear that. <laughs> Say it again. I said LeBron number one. Okay. Kobe number two. Okay. Dang. Kareem, my dude. Kareem number three. Okay. Hey, Shell. Hey, hey, stop. Hold on, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hey, pronounce that hey, whole name stop. for me, Shell. Hey, pronounce we got that whole name for me. Stop this. <laughs> what? Man, come on. Look, man. Far. Hey, man, stop there, man. Come on, dude. <laughs> hey, you, you don't know basketball. I can tell. Hey, you must you must grow up in some, some like, little small little country town, man. There about 200 people. No TV. No no satellite. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Exactly. You must just heard, you you heard about the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't mean Who'd you say number four? Number four you say it don't even matter. <laughs> Kareem, I do Jabbar. <laughs> no, you say him number three. Who's number four? KD, KD. KD number four. Okay. And number five. Number five. Jordan. Hey, Tony, can hey, we just make this call? Hey. <laughs> hey, listen, our pot. Our podcast about, about to be this. Hey, we about to lose our podcast on that one, man. Like, like, <laughs> we might, we, we, we probably got some sponsors, but after that answer, those five that shit I'm just named, man. Yeah, no, man. no, that's not that's, that's not fair. Just justify Michael Jordan number five for Michelle. Nobody in here had him less than two. So you tell us how you got him at number five. Because and you play basketball. Once LeBron, once LeBron and KD, Kareem already got more points than him. Once those guys finish playing basketball, they'll have more career points than Jordan. When they won't have like more championships than Jordan. Man, Robert Horry got more I, championships than Jordan. What are we talking about? I think KD has a shot. If KD comes back 100% healthy, I believe he might have a shot at, 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 at six. He has two, right? Uh, he got DA, two. DA, DA, DA. Hey, Are you telling me? Y'all had no math program hey, in Kentucky? Hey, hold on, hold on. Hey, Mel, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> DA. Y'all have a math hey, program hey, in Kentucky? Hold on, hold on, Mel. You telling me he about to win a championship with Kyrie Irving? Who can't stay LeBron on the court? Did. LeBron did. He didn't want to play. Listen, he didn't want to play with LeBron after that. He was like, listen, I want my own team, which was the worst decision on his part. But you telling me an uh, injury-prone Kyrie, who is aging and getting older, is going mm -hmm. to help lead KD to, to six champion to four more championships. DA, stop it, man. I'm not, I, you and Shelly, I'm not, and y'all working out the same brain. <laughs> we, we're not, we're not saying, 
past six I'm years. not saying he's going to win it four in a row, but I'm saying over the rest of KD's career, they might add a couple more pieces in Brooklyn. I mean, Brooklyn has a lot of money now. Hey, so, D.A., your be- okay. beanie too tight, man. Hey, D.A., your beanie too tight. But listen, uh, hey, hey, Selvin. Hey, back to Selvin, though, D.A., and you notice your boy, man. Hey, your boy must be on. I don't know what he's drinking tonight. He drinks some moonshine. Because what he drinking? <laughs> <laughs> he got hey, Jordan he five. Yeah, Jordan. Hey. He got five, man. Number five. And you try to just, just say right. you made a mistake. Just say you, you drink a lot today. Just say you tired. He, he drinks some hooch, right man. That's what he drinks. I'm really, I'm really, I'm, I'm dead ass serious. I'm really not like a big Jordan fan. Just, hey, you don't, you don't have to be a fan, man. Hey, I think hey, you Jordan's have to be a brand fan. helped him a lot. I I'm think, not, I think his brand helped him a lot. Brandon winning, That's Brandon it. embarrassing everybody he played against. Brandon dunking on Patrick Ewing. Oh, Brandon beating geez, every every sixty win team ever. Dude, yeah, Brandon helped him. Why don't nobody ever talk about the uh, the time when they lost in the playoffs to the to the uh, to the Magic? I believe. Why don't nobody ever bring it up? Because he was wearing Duke number forty five. He only played seventeen games. What's he talking about, Tony? He was still. He was still. He still played in that series. And D.A., come on, man. D.A., D.A. stop it, man. D.A., the and man came, came from baseball. The man was in no basketball shape, D.A. Stop it, man. But I'll tell you what. But what happened the next year? What happened the next he three years, him. D.A.? He, <laughs> he, he, got, he got back he to it. That. He swept he the ass, Shem. You remember that? You know, oh, Shem, then went, you got that huh? They broke up. They broke up the year after the, the, the next year, did they not? Oh, I no. He, he, he broke the ass up. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan did that. They played one more year. Jordan broke the ass up. Jordan hey, Shell, hey, 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 Shell, you got to start drinking gasoline before I'm on the show, man, because right now, what you're talking about don't make any sense at all. Oh, you talk, I, thought you I, was, I thought you worked with this man when he was a kid. You got to take some I did. <laughs> hey, hey Shell, uh, Michael Jordan has more scoring titles than... 1960. Say what? Hey, Shell, Michael Jordan has more scoring titles than Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and KD combined. Cause he wasn't playing nobody. I don't understand how y'all don't understand. Oh my God, Shell! You know what, Shell man? Jordan, Listen. Jordan was the most. Jordan was the most athletic player in the NBA of his era. He jumped over everybody. He ran past everybody. Hold on, hold on. He was hey, stronger he, he, on the he, perimeter. You must know a guy by the name of. Go back and watch some Clyde Drexler uh, highlights. Clyde Drexler right? is not athletic compared to. Shell, hey man, Shell, you know what, man? I'm gonna call I'm gonna call Jeff T and Dion Glove and see if we get a new co-host. I can't do this no more. If he said Michael Jordan number yeah. five, I don't, we gotta vote him out. We gotta vote but him hold out. Hold on, the, the man the man, on, the man just said Clyde Drexel wasn't wasn't athletic. Is Clyde, is Clyde Drexel more athletic than Aaron Gordon? No, he wasn't that, he was athletic who? back then. Hey, 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 Shelvin, hold, hold on, man, Shelvin. Go, go, go watch some highlights, Shelvin. Go watch some highlights, man. That's all I'm going to tell you. They, they, didn't have, they didn't have cable when he grew up in his school, his, his area. He didn't see the game. So, hold on. Is Aaron Gordon it, Hold on. He's not top 50, is he? Who? Who? Aaron Gordon. No. It, it, all right, I got one for you. Is Drexel more athletic than Vince Carter? No. Is who? Hey, man. Hey, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, you, Say it again, Shell. Hey, you gotta go. You, you gotta go watch some highlights, man. I, I, obviously, obviously, you haven't seen enough highlights yeah. of Clyde Drexler. That's all I gotta let you know. It's Clyde Mel. Is Clyde Drexler more athletic than Vince Carter? Clyde Drexler? No. He's right there. All right, all right. He's right there. Tony. Clyde Drexler was a monster, man. No, this is this is what I try Cla- to explain. Clyde for. Drexler was a monster. Clyde Drexler is Tabo Cephalosha right now if he's in the league. He ain't no monster. <laughs> <This is what> <laughs> <I> <laughs> tell him. This, sure. what I try to explain no to young bucks. this is what I try to explain to the young bucks. Jordan dominated everybody, so everybody else looked sorry compared to him because he was that much better. These guys look equal to the guys y'all playing now because 
It's not that much separation. It was such a high separation with Jordan. They looked like they weren't that good, and they was. Akeem Olajuwon. What final did Vince Carter go to? Did he ever lead his team to a finals? You keep talking I'm not about talking about Eastern Conference Finals. We're, we're talking about players. We're not talking about the team. We're talking about well, well, players. Well, Clyde Drexler is, is ahead of Vince Carter if we're talking about players here. So is that I, what I we're talking about? Clyde ranks ahead of Vince Carter. Did all of them. All right. Aaron Gordon, Vince Carter. What, what, who's career would you rather have, Vince Carter or Clyde Drexler? Clyde Drexler. That's, that, Clyde Drexler had a hell of a career, man. I'm he telling don't know, Vince though. Sanity. I'm taking Vince Carter. Nah. Vince Sanity's still okay. playing. Mm-hmm. He's still I here. still serve popcorn, but that don't mean I'm the man. <laughs> 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 so, 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 hey, producer, I need you to pull up that, 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 the USA video if you can. The USA video of the 92 and the 2018. And we're going to look at the Hall of Famers and we're going to end this conversation. We're supposed to go to Craig Hodges next. Tony Shell think you don't read you ain't no you, you ain't read about it. I know Tony read about it. You know about Craig Hodges. Craig Hodges? Man, I know about Craig Hodges. Sh- yeah, Tony you know, know about Craig Hodges. Hodges. You know everything about him. What are you talking about, man? He, he grew up with him. Yeah. Are they <laughs> 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 he, he said he said y'all are a little league team together. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, we, we sure work, man. We got it. We got it popping. That's it. That's it. So I want to look at this not this. This USA, the dream team, and look at the Hall of Famers. We're going to end this discussion. Whoever got the most Hall of Famers or, or, or potential is it. We know that. The, the dream team who Jordan beat, those, all those guys he beat had way more Hall of Famers than LeBron played against or this generation. It is. You're going to see it. You, you said what? He got it. The dream team. With Jordan, all those guys he beat that was on the dream team because he beat all of them, all Hall of Famers. He going to be more Hall of Famers than this generation had, the LeBron generation. That's all I'm saying. So if you beat more Hall of Famers and you got more championships, I think that makes you the best player. Nah, man. Y'all, y'all tripping. You're not asking Shelvin, man. Shelvin don't know anything. Yeah, I, I thought, man, I, I got to find a new mentor, Tony, for my son, man. I, I'm disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Michael Jordan number five. Man, you can be looking at right man. now. It, it, it just, it right, it I just know one it. thing. I'm a, I know one thing, though, Mel. I'm a What's better team than TD. Yeah. He did. He did have a shoot contest. Yeah. Yo, he won't acknowledge that, though. Hey, <laughs> Listen, if, if you can't be the 46-year-old man, Chef, you ought to be embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, uh, That's an embarrassment. You, you still be playing basketball. You can't be me. Hey, hey, listen. I don't even shoot like that. So even if there's a contest and I'm close, you beat me by one spot. What what does that say? How good I am or was as a shooter? I'm 46 competing against a. At that time, you was 29. So a 46 year old man competing against a 29. D what what D D A who you think should win? 46. I don't shoot. I don't play. He only won by maybe two shots. No, you won by one shot. And he was warmed up the whole time. And Tony didn't warm up. Now, Shell did beat him, but I'm going to be honest. Tony did not warm up. Shell just got off the boat. So you talking about a 46-year-old man against a current pro. Lost by one shot. So, hey, I, hey as far as basketball, I got nothing for Tony. And, and Mel, we, we talking about a month ago, and we also talking about when he was 21, and I was 21 in college too. I'm, I'm just, I'm just a better shooter than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. That's, that's, that's no lie. It did come out. Oh, no. hey, hey, that's no lie. But you know what? But, but here, here's the difference, though. When you play and you get to the championship game and you make shots when they count, and you hit shots to Ooh. win a championship, that's wow. totally different. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, we know. <laughs> oh, yeah, we know. He wasn't sitting in the corner uh, in the game. He wasn't really doing that. He had to make one shot. He was trying to say he's he right on the back. back. He's right on the back to everybody. I, I, yeah, I think Ron Mercer came through. Eric Anderson came through and passing the ball. They was getting double teamed. He, he made a wide open shot. Hey, so, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up. I'm trying to. Look, I'm trying to find Clyde stats stats right now, man. You ain't talking about nothing. I'm looking up Clyde Clyde stats right now. Let me see here. <laughs> That's what happened. Right about, about 22 a game. 22. No, I don't think 
Yeah, he probably was. They didn't play nobody. They weren't playing against nobody. Shit. I mean, it was easy. It's like it was. Man. It was That's easy. What you think? So you tell me, Patrick. Yeah, Ewing, when you the most Malachi, athletic player on the on the floor. Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, Isaiah Thomas. Them teams, them teams are considered like the best teams ever. The only teams that we got now to compare to them is the Warriors. Ain't nobody got compared. The 2017 Warriors so okay, and the so 2012 Heat. 20, 26 and five, 20.6 rebounds, five assists, and two steals. That's good. Are you look at, yeah, don't look up bitch, man. Don't look, that's right. nice. don't look, don't look up bitch, man. That's, that's your people. Don't look up bitch because it ain't going to be close to stats. Well, you know, Vince Carter's but only the thing with like those... a point and a half right now. He's still playing, yeah. You're right. <laughs> but the thing with you, what you're talking about with the teams, though, man, you know, all those teams were good, but at different times. They wasn't all good at the same time. So just beating one team. Well, also, you, know, you, gotta, you gotta understand, this team, young team, fella, it's different, it's different. It's different decades of basketball, man. Unfortunately, every decade presents a different player. That's good. So it's kind of comparing a player to 2000 player in the 80s. It's it's a all different right. era. I got you. I got the stats for you right here. Clyde, but you, you got Clyde, but Clyde uh, only played 1,086 games. Vince Carter played 1,500 games. Vince Carter averaged 17, 4, and 3. That's so, good. I'm right. but, Vince but, Carter, but, bad boy. Man, we, come on, man. We, but, 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 to be honest with you, we can't last, we can't count these last four years. We cannot count these last four years that Vince played. Come on, man, stop it, dude. It, 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 there, there was no Vince sanity. He was just Vince. He was no. Vince. <laughs> it, it's been, it's been he was Vinny. Years. It ain't four. It's six years like that. <laughs> six years. He was. Well, that was after he played fifteen years, though, man. I mean, he played twenty-one no, no, he years, though. Twenty-one years, right? So, when he 21 years, turned, right? so the third. 38, when he was 38, he averaged 5.8. And this year at 43, he averaging five. Like, All right, before we close that conversation now, I want y'all to give me y'all top five of the young boys, of five years or less. And I, I, this question for Tony and Shell. We got one minute to go. Tell me who y'all see the next Hall of Famers, the next superstars, the top five. Five who years like? or less? Definitely, Giannis. 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 you got to go Giannis. Are we throwing Giannis in there? Giannis? Is he five years? I like Luca. Luca? Uh, Luca, Luca, Giannis, who else? Gosh, young. I'm trying to think Yo, right now. Yo, Jokic. Yeah. Who is Jokic? Who do you play for? For Denver. Denver. All right. I'm going to throw Devin um, Book in there, man. Just, hey, 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 just. just just to rub the eight wrong, I'm throwing Devin Book up in there, man. Just to rub the eight wrong way, throw my UK right. dude up in there. Throw, what? What? I was gonna throw, no Trey Young. Uh, no Trey Young. Nah, nah. On a bad team, getting the numbers, man. Come on, dude. I'm not going. Hold on, this. If Trey keep doing what he's doing, how long can he keep up this pace? Can he do this ten years? That's these stats. Uh no. Yeah, they, they're not gonna win. But if he if he do these stats ten years, his stats gonna be crazy. Cause what he twenty five and ten. Hey, uh, that's, he killing. Yeah, it's, but, hey, 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 like hey. said, a great season on a bad team. All right, what about what about Zion and Ja? Any respect for them? I got I I got I got one for you. Y'all probably don't. Uh, from Kentucky too. Shay or Shy? How you say his name? Shay Gilgis. Shay Gilgis Alexander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, I like him better than Trey. Uh, That's just my personal opinion. Mm, okay. All right. Well, we're going to see what happens. Uh, uh, Shell, take us out of here. It's 10 on 1. What we got next week? It's 10 on 1. Uh, uh, no, we got some um, some great things coming up this week. I don't know if a lot of people um, paid attention, but Chris Paul's producing uh, you know, the situation here with the Clippers with Donald Sterling. I think it's going to be a great topic that we have next week. Uh, how they handle that. And Going on, uh, we should have a a very special special guest next week as well. So we're working on that. Say so appreciate it. you know everyone tuning in and watching us. Hope you enjoy the show. You know if you got anything we want to talk about, leave some comments. Um, you know we welcome to have anybody else on the show that you want to get on the show and, and talk some smack. 
or have your opinion. Uh, we want to say thank y'all for tuning in. You know, we look forward to seeing y'all next week. Everyone be safe. With Memorial Day weekend, don't don't drown more than 10 people, even though everything's opened up. Just stay safe with that. Keep Holla. it close, but six feet away. Peace out. Yes, sir. Yeah. Be blessed. Be blessed.